The Target 12 investigators take you inside the Rhode Island Veterans Home. Expensive therapeutic spas that have sat unused, resulting in rusty water. Doors leading to the outside built too small for some wheelchairs. A massive dining hall that is used for more lavish parties than serving food to veterans. How often do you eat meals in there? Never. It's a waste of money and a waste of time. I don't know why they ever did it. The $121 million Rhode Island Veterans Home opened in 2017. Earlier this year, the home announced it was running a $2 million budget deficit, and officials concede it is much more expensive to run than anticipated. And for months, Target 12 has been interviewing dozens of residents and employees at the Veterans Home, and many are asking if the facility was built with veterans in mind. Target 12 investigator Tim White is here with the exclusive details. There's no question the new facility is a step up from the previous home, but residents and staff also say some aspects of the building weren't well thought out and some operations of the home have become dysfunctional. The day the Rhode Island Veterans Home in Bristol opened, John Leonard knew there was a problem. Everybody came in the front door. I had to go in the back door. I said, there's something wrong with this picture. Leonard's wheelchair couldn't fit through the front door of his unit. He showed us how his larger sized electric wheelchair slams into the narrow door frame that leads to the outside. But if there is an emergency and you need to get outside and you need to get outside fast, what are your options? Either break a window or try to get out to the main door. Just outside Leonard's room is a map that tells him in the event of an emergency to go to the exterior door of his unit, the very door he can't fit through. So instead, the Vietnam veteran would have to travel all the way through his unit, into the main section of the building, and out the front doors. I'll get out. I don't know how, but I'm getting out. You can't unlock those? No, I can't bend. Leonard says his chair won't fit through doors in other parts of the building either. You have a barbershop and you have a bank. I can't fit in any of those rooms. The poor design of the doors has grabbed the attention of the Governor's Commission on Disabilities. Last July, the commission sent a letter of concern to the director of the Veterans Home, Rick Backus, who has since stepped down. He assured them the doors would be fixed. Has that been done yet? No. The narrow doorways are just one of several issues that's fueling frustration among the people that live and work here. Three years after this shining example of a long-term care facility opened, there are questions if the millions of dollars used to build it was spent properly. These are photos of therapeutic spas installed in each unit, six throughout the entire complex. Their price tag, $10,000 a piece. But the photos show they're being used more for storage than to soothe aching muscles. I don't know anybody that's ever used it. Robert Buetta, a Vietnam veteran, says the equipment is collecting dust. Part of the reason is their location, sitting next to the unit's dining area where everyone eats. So the location of it is pretty questionable. Uh, it's it's ridiculous. This is video of one of the spas turned on. Notice the discolored water pooling into the bottom. Why do you think the water is rusty? It's been sitting there for three years. Unused. Unused. Then there's the main galley, a large dining hall right at the heart of the complex. Each of the six units has their own kitchen and eating area, but residents have complained they don't get to come together in the galley to eat. Wonderful place. It's beautiful. How many meals have you eaten in there? Uh, zero. Records obtained by Target 12 show the galley gets used, but not for resident meals. Outside groups have signed out the galley for special events and dinners, and the cash-strapped home did not charge them to rent space. A spokesperson for the Office of Veterans Affairs says the home has not had sufficient staff to operate both the galley and the six neighborhood kitchens consistently. They add the state is aware of the door frame issues and are working to fix them. For Leonard, he and others with his type of chair hope that soon and not just for an emergency. Freedom of getting outside. Quality of life. Yep. The spokesperson says they are in talks now with the original architect of the home to fix those narrow doorways, and they expect to put the project out to bid soon. With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White, Eyewitness News.